Hey there friends, I'm Leo, and yeah, I know, it's kind of been a while again. I had a little bit of a vacation period, and I played a lot of Valheim with my friends, and then after that I was a little bit busy with a project that I'm working on in secret, and I cannot wait to show it to you guys because it is pretty pretty awesome. But don't you worry, I have not and I will not give up on Spark Muts. The project was just a little bit on development hell for one or two months, give or take. It's just that sometimes I gotta take a couple of breaks so that I can come back refreshed later. So take this one or two months as kind of a vacation period for Spark Muts. And this time around we're going to be talking about everything related to crafting. How it works, how it looks, and what it means for gameplay on Spark Muts. But before we get started, I have a question for you. Do you sometimes feel like you really want to get into game dev, but it's a little bit too complex and a little bit too convoluted with the programs that you gotta use and um, what you need to do in order to make a very simple game? Sometimes that can be very, very daunting, especially for someone that is just trying to get started with game development. So what if I told you that there is a way that you can make games that is very intuitive and very straightforward, where you can just focus on the fun part and you can even earn money from that. This video is being sponsored by Core. Core is an amazing PC gaming platform where you can create, share and play games with your friends, all with multiplayer integrated stuff. And Core is absolutely free and you can grab it on the Epic Store right now. After downloading it, you can go straight to the game editor and then it looks just like Unreal Engine. Or if you want to, you can just hop into a game that was already made by the community and you can check out what you can do using Core. You can make racing games, battle royales, you can make shooter games, you can make survival games, adventure games, any games that you want using Core. Also, when making your game, you really don't have to worry about assets because there's this gigantic library full of sound effects, particle effects, 3D models, all for you to use, even characters, clothing, everything, you name it, it's there. So basically everything you might need for your project. And then after you finish your kick-ass game, you can even earn revenue from that through the Core Perks program, which shares 50% of the revenue with creators. Oh, and get this, people have been able to buy their dream houses and cars using their revenue share from being a Core developer. And right now, Core is hosting the Anime Jam with a $50,000 prize pool. So create a world or a game inspired by your favorite anime. So click the link in the description to start your game development journey. Now with a very fun and intuitive starting point that you can even turn into a very profitable career. But let's get back into crafting. Spark Muts is going to be a survival game with light RPG elements, base building, crafting, all of those things that you see on survival games, but without a lot of the survival elements. So you won't have hunger and things like that and you won't have to really eat, only if you want buffs. So. Where do I want to get with all of this description? Crafting is very important. Crafting is one of the pillar cornerstones of a game like this, and I need to get crafting right. A pretty safe bet when working with something like crafting is to do something that already worked, so something similar to Minecraft, but then I can add my own kind of spin to it based on other experience that I had, so basically Fable 2. But rewinding that a little bit, crafting like in Minecraft can be very very good because the more experience that you have with the game the better you are going to be at knowing exactly what you need to craft certain items and you already know the patterns and there's no feeling better than when you look back and you think oh I didn't have enough experience back then and I learned how to make certain items and that is very rewarding for the player and kind of a negative side effect to that is that some players may see this as kind of unwelcoming and uh, kind of hard or a hurdle to get through so what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to do kind of similarly to what Minecraft has done already which is add some items or all of these items into a journal like section and then you can just pick those items and immediately have that pattern drawn for you another thing that we could do is we can integrate that into gameplay a little bit better we can have it so that the players dynamically find these recipes out in the world but if they already know how to make that they don't need to find a recipe they can just go ahead and make it but let's rewind a bit and stop talking about game design and let's talk about making the crafting system itself to make the crafting system work i still use the same item class system that i'm already using for my inventory for example which is something that i talked about on the organization devlog i think each one of these slots over here is like an inventory slot you can grab a reference to an item inside of that slot and a quantity for how many of these items are inside of that one slot. But what about this grid pattern? It is a little bit different than what is being done in the inventory, because this is a int point coordinate system, and it is a system in Unreal Engine where you can grab X and Y coordinates 
so that you can have a system like a grid for example. Basically it can get what item is in what position of the grid. So for example you can have an item that is at position x0 and y1 or x0 and y2 and then you can kind of see the recipe using these coordinates. And then I've done this structure here that lists the item that is produced and the combination of the items that are needed to produce this using int point coordinates. And then using that structure, I've made a data table and that data table is called recipes. And these recipes are going to be checked. For example, let's say that you are the player, you will have a certain amount of items that you can make. So this recipe list is going to be associated with that player. But then let's say that you have a crafting table. You can have a different recipe list associated with that crafting table with a bunch of completely different items. So in a nutshell, what I'm doing with this crafting window is I am comparing the combination of items that you have inserted with the combinations that are found inside of the recipe. If there is any matches, then it's going to generate the result and then you can grab that result and it's going to pay the cost which is the items that are on this area over here also because of this kind of recipe data table it is very very easy for me to have a workbench now because i can use the same widget with just a different recipe list that are going to be exclusive for that workbench after i had that recipe working with just those two ingredients i tried making a legit recipe using pen and paper and you guys can just imagine patrick trying to solve a simple math problem because i was feeling so dumb because i couldn't i couldn't wrap my head around making a grid system in paper and grabbing the right coordinates and I don't know, I just wasn't able to do that. Not only I had a slight glitch that even if I had the right combination, it would not work properly, but also I I think that system was just a little bit too convoluted and too troublesome for me to every time that I want to generate a new recipe, I would have to come back to pen and paper to write down everything. And that was not very uh, performant. I would spend too much time doing that. Of course that I can have a pre-made paper where I can just draw with a pen um, but then again, that wouldn't be very efficient. It doesn't really feel right to have to use a pen and paper to do something inside of the engine. So I thought of myself, there must be an easier in-game way to do this, right? So I started trying some solutions that were all in-game. So let's say that I would hit play and then I would drag these items over to the crafting window and then there would be a special developer button that I can just click and it would either copy that to the data table or copy that to the Windows copy and paste system. But none of these solutions work because data tables cannot have anything written in them during gameplay. So you can't really write anything to a data table, you can only read. So then I was kind of at a loss. I didn't know how to save these values inside of the engine itself. And then it hit me. What if I save them inside of the editor? not on the engine. So then I remembered that there's this thing called editor utility widget that you can use so that you can use these widgets inside of the editor and those can be very helpful. So let's say that you have a bunch of items that you want to align on X instead of manually having to align them using the same copy and paste uh, X position, for example, you can use an editor utility widget to click a button and then select all of those items and have them aligned. And there's even some plugins that are only made with these widgets in mind. So what I've done is I've made this kind of mock-up of the crafting grid. And inside of this, you can choose which item you want from this list and this list is another data table that I've done only so that you can choose which item that you want. And after choosing the item, you can choose the quantity and you can make your own drawing inside of this grid and then you can choose the resulting item. Also, one problem that I'm having, and I don't know if you guys can find a solution for this, but I really wanted to be able to list all of the existing classes ever in the game. So for example, I wanted to have a list with all of the objects or all of the items that I've made in the game, so all of their classes. But there's no way uh, to get a function where I can grab all of the abstract classes inside of the project. So I had to make another data table just so that I can have these items listed. So okay, after you have your layout saved, you can just click this button and then you need to have an actor, which is an, a simple actor that I've made that only houses this structure variable here. So what happens is this editor utility widget, it's going to look for this actor and then it's going to overwrite the value of this actor to be the value that you just generated. 
So then you can just copy and paste that into the recipe data table and it works. And done. We have a new recipe based on something that we've made using editor utility widgets and a simple actor. And the best thing is that this workflow is very quick and simple and I can work a lot with this uh, because we're going to be having a bunch of different items that you can craft in the game. So I'm going to be doing this workflow a bunch of different times. And that is all for crafting for now. Now that I'm getting back into development, I'm organizing myself and I want to get a lot of stuff done this year. Also be on the lookout because there's going to be a new video dropping next week. Uh, it's been a while in the work and it should have come out two weeks ago but Steam wanted me to have the Steam store page up for a little bit before I actually released the game so I want to release the video alongside the game but it's going to be pretty cool if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more stuff about spark Muts, I have a big video series all about the development of the game and you can see all of the big changes the game had ever since its conception also don't forget to check out core in the anime jam with a fifty thousand dollar prize pool use the links in the description to learn more and if you want to you can also join the spark Muts community over on discord and there you can grab some keys for the closed playtest you guys have a wonderful week i'm leo signing out <laughs>